Come on, y'all ready? Hey, can we just start off and give our Colleen campus a big, huge welcome? Let them know how much we love them and all those that are joining us online. I got to tell you about an amazing miracle that took place yesterday in our Colleen campus in the middle of a terrible storm. They have their Easter egg hunt, and they led over 50 people to Jesus yesterday. Let's give it up for them, man. We're proud of you guys. So awesome. Love what God is doing. That's what Reach Church is all about. It's about reaching our community for Jesus and helping you to be the best you that you can be. And so that's what this Easter season brings into focus big time. Today is Palm Sunday. Some of you may not understand exactly what that means, but today is the day that Jesus entered into Jerusalem one week before his crucifixion, death, burial, and resurrection. And the reason why it's called Palm Sunday is because he was riding into that city on a donkey. I love Jesus. He didn't pick a stallion. He didn't pick an Arabian horse. He rode in on a donkey, right? Humility 101. He rode in on a donkey, and they placed, they came out to worship him, and they placed palm branches down for the donkey to step onto, and that's why it's called Palm Sunday. So it's a very special Sunday, and in this Easter season, we know that this is the time that we celebrate. We celebrate all the time, but this is a time where we take a special focus to celebrate Jesus, who he is, and what he has done, and what he's still yet to do in and through our lives. And that's what we looked at last week when we kicked this series off, Ransom, that he is that. He was the ransom. He was the price that God paid to redeem your life. He was the price that God paid to be able to have every single person who's ever born into this earth have an opportunity to receive forgiveness for the mistakes, the wrongs, the sins that they have done. Isn't that good news? That's why it's called the good news. And he did that for you. God chose you. That's what we looked at last week. And then he chose Jesus to do it for you. And then Jesus had a choice, and he still chose you. That means something special about you. I'm not here to talk about what maybe a, a parent or an ex or a bully at school told you. I'm telling you today what Jesus said about you, what God says about you, how he sees you. Because if you can begin to see yourself, how God sees you, you won't be able to stand the sight of the glory that God has placed upon your life. You are not defeated. You are not a loser. You are not. You are not what somebody else said you were. You are not the word curses that have been spoken over or in your life. That's not who you are. Today I'm here to declare to you through the word of God of who you are in Christ. And that's what we're going to focus on, in Christ. I know who I am. I know who I used to be is a better way to put it, outside of Christ. You don't want to know that guy. But I also know who I am. In Christ. And I want every single one of you to walk out here today with an assurance, with a, with a faith-filled confidence of who you are in Jesus. Because it's amazing. The first thing I want to tell you is that you are a child of God. You're not just some ordinary person. You're not just here to suck air and pay your bills and make it paycheck to paycheck until you die. That's not your purpose. You are not here for just some minimal, nominal thing. You are here by divine calling and purpose of God. And you are a child of God. Jesus said it himself in John chapter 1 and verse 12. And we're going to say everything together that's in orange. He said, but to all. That means everybody. That means you. That means your neighbor. That means the person at your workplace that you don't like. That means your mother-in-law. That means everybody. All, but to all who have received him. To them, he gave the right to become children of God. That's who you are. You are a child of God. 
And you need to understand this today. What does that mean? If God is who he said he is, and he is. And we don't need, to, we don't need as an, an, a finite being to try to prove an infinite God. He is. Jesus said, I am. And he is who he said he is. And if he is the creator of the heavens and the earth and the breather of life and humanity, if he is all-powerful, almighty, all-knowing, all-present, if he is, then if he is that and he is calling you his child, then that means you're special. That means you're royal. That means that you are meant to stand apart. And not blend in. And look what he says. To those who believe in his name. You are a child of God. I want you to receive that today. It's hard sometimes for us to truly receive the truth of who we are because we fight false humility to not want to be puffed up in pride. But the truth is this. God wants you to be proud about who you are because it's not you that makes you who you are. It's him. And you should have a confidence, the confidence of Christ within you to know and receive and believe this is who you are, that you are a child of God. Number two, you are untouchable. I'm going to give you some theology 101 today and break this down for you. You are untouchable. You should be more excited about that. 1 John chapter 5, verse 18 says this, We know that God's children do not make a practice of sinning. Let's pause right there for a moment. It does not say, let's talk about what it does not say. It does not say that we know that God's children never sin. It doesn't say that we know that God's children, they, they sin only once in a great, great while. What it says is this, we know that God's children, as God's children, we do not make a practice of sinning. And that's the difference where we can be released of the condemnation. Let me just clarify this and break this down for you. The difference of being a normal human being that has been saved by God and believing with all your heart to be the best God has called you to be and making some mistakes along the way and being somebody who intentionally sets out to practice sin. If you've ever played a sport or had a hobby where you had to put some practice in, you were intentionally taking your time, your talent, your treasure. You were intentionally focusing on making yourself better at that which you were doing so that you can become a winner at it. I don't know that anybody here today is doing their best at taking their time, talent, and treasure to mess their life up by practicing sin so that they can be better at it, so they can, be, they can walk around with a tag, I'm the best sinner that there has ever been. So what we know is that God's children do not make a practice of it. Now, at the same time, it doesn't mean that we have a license to go out and just do whatever we feel like doing. God holds us and says to us that we should strive for perfection. We will not be perfect into the day that we are with them, but we should strive. We should want to get better and better, stronger and stronger every day. For God's Son holds them securely. Jesus has got his loving arms wrapped all around you. And the evil one, Satan, the devil, our great adversary, the evil one, everybody say it together, cannot touch them. Come on now, somebody. Let me just tell you, like MC Hammer would tell you, can't touch us. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got you to gotta get this deep down on the inside of you. You don't belong to this world, and you don't belong to the Satan, and you don't belong. And you, he has no ability to take your eternity from you. It doesn't mean he can't mess with you. It doesn't mean he can't tempt you. It doesn't mean he can't attack you. That's not what it's saying. What it's saying is he can't touch you, who you really are, a divine, called, created being. If you have been saved and you are secure in God, the devil can never touch your eternity. He can never take away from you the promises of God. This is who you are. You're untouchable. That's better news than y'all letting on. You are untouchable. If MC Hammer was here right now, he would bust a move. 
I tried, but I just, I ain't got it no more. I ain't really never had a leg MC Hammer anyway, but. This next one, we're going to take a little bit of time with, is you are more than a conqueror. You are more. The word conqueror means the ultimate victor, the one who always routes a victory. And Jesus is telling you that you are more than that, that you are more than just an ordinary winner. You are beyond that. Romans 8, chapter 31, chapter 8, verse 31 through 39 says, What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, then who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with Christ, graciously give us all these things? You know what he's telling you? Like we were singing that second, that third song today. He's telling you this. I've, I've not failed you yet. So don't judge me off of what the enemy's trying to get you to believe about what may happen in the future. I'm here. I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I'm never going to leave you. I'm never going to forsake you. And so when we look at God, we've got to see God for who he really is. You're not the exception to the rule. You're not so bad that God's just going to give up on you. He gave it all up for you. So we got to ask ourselves these kind of questions. This is what the apostles doing is the Holy Spirit's upon him as he's writing this. Is he saying, he's, he's asking questions that basically answer the torment that the enemy brings to us. What shall we say in response to these things? I'll tell you what we say. If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, he gave him up for all of us. How will he not also, along with Christ, graciously give us all these things? And then let's move on. Look at this. Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? Let's say it together. It is God who justifies. God is. And God alone justifies. You don't need nobody else to justify you. And you got to stop trying to justify yourself. It is God and God alone who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died. And look at this. And it gets better. More than that, who was raised to life. He is at the right hand of God and he is interceding for us all. Picture that. Jesus today is up in heaven at the right hand of the Father and he has given everything he's got to intercede for you. For everything you've done, for every attack that may come, he is standing in the gap between you and God, connecting you and the Father together. So let's move on. Who shall separate us then? From the love of Christ. Shall trouble or hardship, persecution, famine or nakedness or danger or the sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep being led to the slaughter. No. In all these things, everybody say together. We are more than conquerors. Through Christ, who loved us, we are more than conquerors. Through Christ, who loved us, you need to start seeing who you are in Jesus. You need to hear it. You need to see it. You need to say it. You need to declare it over your life. There are 90 scriptures that I have written down and put on the website on a resources page. There are 90 scriptures that declare who you are in Christ. Ninety. God gave one for every occasion, every attack, every doubt, every fear, every bit of anxiety. He gave them to us, not just for us to be hearers of it, for us to be doers of it, for us to speak it and declare it. So when the enemy comes in like a flood, he can raise up a standard against it with his Holy Spirit. As you begin to declare those words, because this scripture goes on to say, I'm convinced of this. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. 
Nothing in heaven, nothing in hell, nothing on earth. No angels, no demons, no mankind can separate you from the love of God. Why? Because of who you are. Who you are in Christ. You are the light of the world. Like a city set on the side of the hill that can't be hid. You are sanctified, set apart, ready to be used of God. You are healed. You are whole. You are complete. You are secure. You are the living stones that God is using to build his spiritual temple in this house and in this city and in this world. You are a son and daughter of God. You are what creation is waiting on to wake up and realize who you are so they can be who they have been called to be. You're an ambassador of Christ. You are the head and not the tail. You are the first and not the last. You are a victor, not a defeated one. You are delivered. You are set free. You are a child of the living God who has been created in the image of a holy God. This is who you are. You are not what anybody else says you are. You're not what you say you are. You're not what a mirror or a magazine says you are. You are created in a beautiful and wonderful way. You have been fearfully and wonderfully made. That's who you are. And the devil's been lying to you real good. And he's been using people to help him, to shame you, to put you down, to make you believe something that is not true. He's been doing his absolute best to keep you from the truth of who you really are. You are destined for greatness. You have divine nature living on the inside of you. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are. That's who you are. You are that and more than that. I just quoted maybe 15 scriptures. There's there's 75 more to go about who you are in Christ. I don't got time today or the memory to rip them all out. But I hope you're getting the point. This is who you are. You are a chosen people. Because you're a child of God, you are royal. Listen to this. Look at this. You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Let's just stop there. He's, people get confused and think he's speaking to Israel because it says nation. He's not. He's speaking to believers. It's like I am, don't laugh at me, I am an Oakland Raider fan. Been all my life. Come on, somebody. And we got something we call Raider Nation. And it means no matter where you're at in the nation, if you're a Raider fan, you belong to Raider Nation. This is what the apostles say, saying. This is what the Holy Spirit is speaking. It's not just Israel. We are all now sons and daughters in the line of Abraham. We get that through Jesus. And so he's telling us all that together as Christians, we make up a holy nation. God's very own possession. And as a result, you can, everybody say it. Show others the goodness of God. For he called you out of the darkness and into his wonderful light. God is so good. And he's taking his time with you. This is all a process. He's not looking for perfection. He's looking for progression. He wants you to see you getting better and better and stronger and stronger because he wants you to understand and know who you really are. And he does that for you first, but then secondly, for you to be able to show others the goodness of God in your family, in your workplaces, in your neighborhoods, in the highways and byways, in strange places, in Shopping places, wherever you go, he's always with you. And he's always excited to have an introduction to other people through you. He wants you to show others his goodness. And we're coming up on Easter. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to give you some statistics that are mind-boggling. 93% of all Christians in America who will say yes to Jesus will do so at a church service. 93%. 
78% of everybody who comes to church was invited by somebody else. But hear this now. On Easter, there is a four times more likely chance that somebody that you would invite will come. There's a four times more, four time more likely chance they'll say yes more than they'll say no. So when somebody else may say no all day long, all the way throughout the year, on Easter, they're four times more likely to say yes. So we have this amazing opportunity as we celebrate the resurrection of our King, of our Savior, of the one who has made us who we are, as we celebrate the greatest ransom ever paid. As we do that, we have this chance to invite people that are far from God to be able to know Him so they can find freedom, discover their purpose, and make a difference in this life as well. And we're given... This is what Easter weekend looks like. We got six services here in Austin. We have three in Colleen, and Lucas will tell the Colleen campus those specific times. But for the Austin campus, we have our Good Friday at 7 p.m. It's going to be awesome. We're going to come together and just celebrate Jesus. And then Saturday at 6, Sunday, all four services at normal times, 9, 15, 10, 30, 11, 45, 6 p.m. So this is what we have. We have six chances here, three chances. We have nine chances on Easter, total, as a Reach Church family, to invite our friends, our families, our co-workers, people that we know are full, and, that, and, and invite them, sit right with you. And when we do the salvation call, and I say every head bowed, every eye closed, I promise you it's okay if you peek to see if they raise their hand. But you, you can be a part of this, and you can be used to show people the goodness of God. We got invite cards out in the lobby. Grab some of those and get them in as many hands as you possibly can because people are looking. We are in a dying and hurt and broken world. This world is more hungry and thirsty for truth and substance than I think they've ever been. And we've got the way, the truth, and the life living on the inside of us. Let's share it with everybody else. Amen. Can we give Jesus one big thank you for his word and the simplicity of it?